CJ Advisory Committee promises heightened awareness on the regional court. Details to this story and more in the National Reports. Welcome back with the news in detail for today, Tuesday, August 28th, 2018. I am Wendy Edmund. Now that Carnival is over, Grenadians will witness a heightened education awareness campaign on the Caribbean Court of Justice. That assurance from attorney at law, Robert Ferguson, a member of the CCG Advisory Committee. He says this will begin in earnest at Wednesday's launch of the CCJ Public Awareness Campaign, which is designed to guide the voting populace on making informed decisions on Referendum D. Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados will be the featured speaker at Wednesday's function at the Grenada Trade Center, which runs from 6 to 9 p.m. Prime Minister um, Dr. Mitchell, he, he will also be one of the speakers and uh, um, you have Prime Minister Mia Motley uh, being the feature speaker. Um, Prime Minister uh, Mitchell is expected to formally um, announce the date, uh, confirm the date uh, for the referendum and there are several um, cultural items. You have uh, speakers from the committee itself um, highlighting uh, different um, aspects of the CCG. Ferguson says when he speaks of the CCG, he's speaking about much more than easy access. The issue of the establishment of a regional court has been discussed since 1901. Okay. 1901, over 100 years ago. And it's now coming to fruition. And therefore, that's critical arm of the state. Um, that's the judiciary. People must have access to it. We have a, a judicial committee of the Privy Council in which 95% plus safely cannot access because they cannot afford to go there. And that's just the access to justice point. But again, we are depending on a court whose services can be removed from us at any time because the British taxpayer funds that court and probably British Jack Baxpear doesn't understand how these things operate himself but one day somebody some movement would grow um, saying well why we have to pay for a court for people all the way in the Caribbean and they have their own court and put pressure on the governments to remove these services, as you had with Brexit. While there are many arguments to support the decision to use the CCJ as a final court of appeal, there is still concern in some circles about trust and confidence. We have some of the uh, best minds in the Caribbean um, sitting on that court, but it's not only the Caribbean. Okay, where else are they drawn from? We have the Netherlands, um, Justice Jacob Witt, for example. He is from the Netherlands, one of the top judges okay. um, over the years, um, involved in um, academia, um, writing and so, and also presiding over courts in Curaçao, Aruba, um, the Dutch-speaking islands. Preparations for the 2019 budget has moved into high gear. As part of the budget preparation process, the Ministry of Finance is engaging stakeholders to hear their concerns on the state of the country's economy and suggestions for the way forward. Already, the Ministry of Finance has held discussions with the private sector and the credit unions and has confirmed the participation of stakeholders from the Bankers Association, Agriculture and Fisheries during this week. A consultation will also be held on the Sister Isle for the people of Caracom Petit Martinique at the Hillsborough Resource Centre on Friday, August 31st, 2018, beginning at 6 p.m. This year's youth consultation will focus heavily on youth unemployment, creating opportunities for young people in small business development, agriculture and education, among other youth-inspired areas. This is the National Report. More news after the break. You are invited to a public session on the Caribbean Court of Justice this Wednesday, August 29th at the Grenada Trade Centre. 
Come and hear a special address by Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley, as well as presentations by members of the local CCJ committee. Also, come armed with your questions and comments as we host a full interactive session. It's a special session at the Grenada Trade Center from 6 p.m. this Wednesday. It is the launch of the public activities as Grenada gets ready to affirm the Caribbean Court of Justice as its final appellate court. We are supporting the CCJ as we break the chains of colonialism for one united Caribbean. If you are West Indian, then show me your day with something up in the air. Welcome back. September 1st, 2018 is the date given by government for which the ban on the importation of styrofoam will take effect. The goal is to achieve a zero styrofoam status by April 2019. Government introduced the Non-Biodegradable Waste Control Bill 2018 to the lower house. It speaks to three levels of prohibition, importation and manufacture of styrofoam products, sale and offer for sale of styrofoam products, and the prohibition for sale and offer for sale of food in or with these products. This bill seeks to regulate the use of non-biodegradable products to reduce the negative environmental effects. During the government's weekly post-cabinet media brief, Climate Resilience Minister Senator Simon Steele said the government has signed the order for two items to be banned in the first instance by 2020. The phasing out of styrofoam will take place over the course of, um, of the coming year with the final, um, the, the final ban coming into effect. So that will be the sale of styrofoam with, um, with food items in it, which will be on the 1st of April 2019. So by April 2019, there should be no more styrofoam in the state of Grenada. Regarding single-use handled plastic bags, the importation ban will come into effect on the 1st of February 2019, so we have time to transition to that. With the final ban, the last carrier bag, being able to be sold in this country the 1st of February 2020, so again, over the course of a 12-month period, the phasing out of single-use plastic bags. He said consultations are ongoing to prohibit the importation of other single-use plastic items. The order for other single-use plastics, whether it's cutlery, um, cups, plates, um, containers, etc., um, is due to come in force on the 1st of February 2019, but it will not be signed um, until further consultation has, been, has taken place with importers, with stakeholders. Some concerns have been raised over the timing, um, so further discussions are required before that order is signed. But again, we, we uphold our commitment to the banning of single-use plastics, but working with importers, with stakeholders, to ensure that the implementation of that and the economic impact of that is as seamless as possible. Satellite images show the month of September will bring even more seaweed to the island's beaches. That announcement was made by Minister for Climate Resilience, Senator the Honorable Simon Steele. He says the use of heavy machinery continues to be problematic. So government has decided to change its approach to use manual methods. Recent satellite images show that the month of September is, is going to be extremely problematic for us. There are large mats of sargassum out there that is moving towards us and our neighbors. Right now in Grenada, we have a major issue in the Subis and Marquis areas. For the past two months, um, we have had heavy equipment clearing the sargassum um, as it comes ashore. But what we have found based on, um, on the work that is being carried out, the negative impact on the beach from use of that heavy equipment um, is, is proving problematic. Grenada has turned to Martinique and St. Martin for help and a team will travel soon to learn about their strategies on how to best manage the sagasm.
According to Senator Steele, support will also be obtained from the Japanese government. Cabinet approved a, um, a team from Grenada to visit both Martinique and St. Martin so they can have first-hand experience as to what is taking place and for recommendations as to equipment acquisition and operations um, for us here in Grenada. In addition to that, we have approached the Japanese government on behalf of our OCS neighbors for both technical and financial support for the ongoing management of this, um, this problem. So, once again, this is a priority um, issue for us and priority action is taking place. But it's important for us to recognize and realize this isn't about solving the problem. The problem is too big for us to solve, not just nationally, but regionally. But it's a matter of finding solutions as to how we can best manage it short, medium, and long term. And that's a wrap on the National Report for today, August 28th, 2018. On behalf of all of us in the newsroom, I am Wendy Edmund, thanking you for viewing.